Hi there. My name's Eric Adams, and I'm going to show you a simple demo of Intel Trust Domain Extensions called Intel TDX and how it brings new levels of protection to virtual machines. Confidential computing refers to cloud computing that better isolates data on a CPU when it is being processed. Existing technologies through encryption protect data at rest when it is on the disk, or it protects data in flight, such as encrypting across a network. This new paradigm of confidential computing protects data while in use. This is new. With existing technologies, even if you had an encrypted disk image, once it's decrypted in memory, it's plain text. Now, data is encrypted even during runtime. When read from main memory, it stays encrypted on the data bus, and it only gets decrypted inside the CPU, and it's only plain text inside the CPU. Attestation is the final piece of this new technology. It can mathematically prove to an external party that one, it is running with expected code and data. Basically, it's not tampered with. Two, it runs on specific confidential computing hardware like Intel Trust Domain Extensions. And three, that it is running at the latest security level, also referred to as the Trusted Computing Base. This diagram shows the different trust boundaries for confidential computing. Without confidential computing, you have the largest trust boundary. A rogue administrator could compromise your secrets. A compromised BIOS or host OS would also leave your workload exposed. There is a lot more trust needed and is one reason why confidential workloads traditionally have not run on public infrastructure. A big improvement over this is Intel TDX. The trust boundary starts at the VM guest admin. You're still trusting that the VM guest, along with all its libraries and applications, are trusted. However, now with the cloud stack and someone with root access can be untrusted. If they were to use their admin access to dump the memory of a trust domain, what we call a confidential VM using Intel TDX technologies, you would see a lot of encrypted data. Intel TDX lets you take existing workloads and run them unmodified, but with the extra protection that Intel TDX provides. This opens up cloud computing in mass for sensitive workloads. Microsoft Azure has a public preview of Intel TDX using their DCES v5 and ECES v5 series confidential VMs. If you need the absolute smallest trust boundary, then Intel Software Guard Extensions or Intel SGX should be considered. It moves the trust boundary all the way down to the application, even as far down to a single function. First introduced in 2018, it requires applications to be written with trusted and untrusted parts. A really great example is a key signing app. The code to generate a private key into signed certificates can be made to only run within an SGX enclave. It's possible to run unmodified workloads in an SGX enclave page cache. That's using the Grameen Shielded Containers project. On the left are legacy VMs. They operate how you expect. The memory is plain text. On the right is a trust domain. The difference is the new Intel TDX module. It runs in a special region of main memory shielded from other software access. It requires a new type of VMM to manage resources in a protected way. The guest OS inside the VM needs to be aware of Intel TDX because it has new tasks to handle to access the secure encrypted memory. The workload though, it can be exactly the same, which makes the user experience much easier. Every TD uses a dedicated ephemeral hardware managed key and Intel TDX enforces the isolation of each TD from every other software. Now, I don't plan to show attestation in the demo later since I'm already launching a TD from the command line, but I do want to mention its capabilities. Attestation ensures that the booted TD image is exactly what you expect. The measurements, what we call RTMRs, are as expected. It's a valid TD. The TD is being executed on Intel TDX enabled platform. And more importantly, that the TDX platform is fully up to date. That last one is important because older software might have known vulnerabilities. The TDX attestation flow derives upon Intel SGX, so this might be familiar. I'm going to go over this quickly. One, the relaying party triggers the attestation of a TD. Two, the TD performs a TD call to the Intel TDX module. Three and four, Intel TDX module performs the SIEM report SIEMOPS to create a signed TD report, including measurements like the TDX module, TD, and other attributes. Five, the result goes back to the TD through the VMM in step six, which passes it on to the TD quoting enclave in step seven. Steps eight, nine, and 10, the TD quote is passed to the relaying party, which performs quote verification by itself or by using a service. 
That concludes the remote attestation process. There's more details in each of these steps, but as you can see, the flow is complete. There isn't just one attestation service available. If you trust your cloud vendor, you could use their attestation service. It may or may not be consistent between Intel SGX and Intel TDX. An application vendor's attestation service at least has separated responsibilities between the verifier and the infrastructure provider, but support in other areas could be limited. Intel Trust Authority is a new service launched in 2023. It can easily satisfy all of the requirements listed, including support for Intel SGX and TDX. It can work in a public cloud, hybrid cloud, or on edge deployments. Now, let me show you the demo. The host I'm using was configured using the instructions of the CentOS SIG. It goes over how to configure a host, verify that the host is configured correctly, how to create and run a guest VM, and finally, how to do some basic debug. One thing that can be a bit confusing is how to configure a BIOS for Intel TTX support. Most of the necessary settings are in the processor configuration. It's important to have at least one memory div for every memory controller. On my server, there are 32 memory slots with the first channel of each memory controller populated for a total of 16 DIMMs. In my demo, I'm gonna show you three windows. The top one I'm using will show you what's happening on the host. DMessage shows that I have a TDX module installed. I have two versed XML definitions. The TDGAS is for my trust domain. The OVMF for my loader specifically supports Intel TDX. And I'm using a RHEL or Red Hat Enterprise Linux root file system from the CentOS instructions that is TDX aware. I also have a supported version of QEMU. The important part of this is the launch security field. Now let me show you the legacy version XML file. It's essentially the exact same, except there's no launch security defined. I will define the legacy XML first with Versh and then start it. I'll also define the TD XML and start it with Versh. While those boot, I will switch to the middle window, which will be my legacy VM. I'm going to use Versh DOM IF ADDR to get the IP so I can SSH into the VM. In the legacy VM, you'll see that there is no dev TDX module. DMessage does not indicate any TDX support. I'll do the same for the TD. I'll get to the IP address and SSH into it. After a successful login, if I check slash dev slash TDX, you'll see a TDX guest that is defined. DMessage shows that a TDX guest was detected. This is a good indication that TDX is being supported correctly in this TD. Back at my legacy VM, the secret.py is a Python program that will generate random strings to write to memory. I'm going to start that program and let it generate some random strings. From the top host window, I can dump the memory of the running legacy VM. While it saves the memory, I'll copy one of the already randomly generated strings. I'm going to use that in a grep command. Because the memory isn't encrypted, you can see that the string is in the output of the memory dump. Now switching to the bottom window where my TD is, You'll notice that the secret.py is the exact same program as what I ran in the legacy VM. I'm going to start it with Python and then switch back to my host window up top. I will do the exact same memory dump as before, but this time with the TD memory. While it is saving the TD memory to disk, I'm going to copy one of the randomly generated strings. If I grep for that string in the output, you can see that it isn't found. That's because the memory is encrypted. I am not covering attestation in this demo but there are tools to generate a quote with a test TDX, a test sample application, copy the quote.dat out of the VM, and then verify the quote using the SGX data center attestation primitives. This was a simple demo to show how Intel TDX provides enhanced protection and secures workloads. The first link is to the CentOS host and guest setup guide. If you want to learn more about Intel Trust Authority, check out the second link. If you have a server that supports Intel TDX, then give this a try. Thanks for watching. Thank you.